Thank you. Fitz. Um, I just want to start by thanking all the voting members of the Hall of Fame. Actually, that's not true. I only want to thank the ones that voted for me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all kidding aside, it's a huge honor to be here tonight. Um, congratulations to my fellow inductees, Herschel McGriff, Kirk Shelmerdine, and Mike Helton. When I think of NASCAR, I think of Mike Helton. Uh, there's not a better person that represents what NASCAR is all about. Congratulations, Mike. Very deserving, long overdue. There's no way to recognize and thank everyone that's been part of this incredible journey. So I just had to pick a few of the many people that have influenced my career and really shaped me into who I am as a racer. For the rest of you, Please know that I'm so thankful for all of you and I appreciate every one of you. I always looked at my career as a ladder. You start at the bottom, you hope to climb your way to the top. My ladder has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rungs on it and without any of them, bottom, middle, top, wherever you fit, I wouldn't be standing here without any of you. So really from the bottom of my heart, thank you all. My first memories of racing are my dad taking me to watch his brothers race at stock cars at Jefferson Speedway. He'd head to the pits, and I'd sit up on the hill with my aunts, grandparents, and cousins. I quickly learned that I was more obsessed with the cars themselves than watching them compete. When we weren't at the racetrack, I'd always be bugging my dad, asking him if we could stop at Uncle Gary's house to watch him work on his car. We spent a lot of days out there working on race cars, storytelling, laughing, and uh, just spending time together. Racing truly is a family sport. I need to mention uh, Greg Folk. He designed and built my dad's first new race car. I eventually started working summers at his shop alongside of him and Daryl Smithback. They taught me so many lessons about racing and showed me the right way to do things. He also changed my approach to racing. I was at Slinger Speedway, I was 17 years old, driving a new sportsman car that Greg and I built together. I set fast time that night and won the fast dash. Greg showed up right after the dash was over. I was so happy when I saw him. I quick wheel walked out, gave him the news, fast time and we won the fast dash. He didn't smile, he didn't share my enthusiasm. He asked how the car was. I said, we got fast time and won the fast dash. He stared at me again. He said, I asked, how's the car? So I calmed down and I told him how it was driving. He asked what I could do better and how we could get it there. And then we quickly went to work on getting it ready for the feature. I didn't realize it at the time, but this changed the way I looked at racing for the rest of my life. It made me enjoy the small successes less, but it paved the way for larger ones. It taught me to never be satisfied. You weren't going to win off talent alone, or by having more fun than everyone else, or having a good attitude. You were going to win by taking it more seriously than your competitors, working harder, and making your car faster. So for everyone out there that's worked with me, that has made the comment that I'm never happy, blame Greg. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've heard that a lot. Uh, I met Rick Kipley in 1992. I was in the middle of the worst year of my career. We were slow, the engines we were running were blowing up all the time, and I was honestly on the verge of giving up in my dream. But Rick changed all that. He helped me and Dad out, built this new engine the next season, and we immediately started winning. I can honestly say that Rick and the boys at KPE saved my career. On top of that, he turned out to be one of the most honest, honorable, humble, hardworking, and just plain nicest guys I've ever met. When I get asked about my big break, there's a couple of them that come to mind. Um, we kind of cover a lot of it tonight, but similar to my situation, John and Robbie grew up racing together as a father-son duo in Wisconsin. However, they were able to take their dream south and start a Bush Grand National team. Robbie had some success in the seat, but ended up getting hurt and moved to the crew chief role. In April of 97, I get that call asking me to stop by their shop and talk to me about driving their car. They weren't having a good season, uh, their driver was hurt, and they felt like they needed to make a change. After talking a bit, they offered me the ride, but if I wanted it, I needed to be in Nashville the next week. I played it cool. I waited about two seconds. I told them I'd be there. <laughs> and then we looked around the shop to find a car I could sit in, but they were all wrecked. So I sat in a car with no rear clip. I asked Robbie if they had one that wasn't wrecked. He assured me they did. He said it was at the body shop and it would be back together in time for Nashville. <laughs> So we were, uh, next week, we were 15 minutes in the first practice, and I knew it was going to work. Uh, Robbie, being a driver, made it so much easier for me to confidently communicate. He understood immediately that if I didn't have the car feeling like I wanted it to feel, that we weren't going to run good. That was the start of a long and fruitful relationship. We won our first Bush Grand National race together. We won our first cup race together and won a cup championship. We had a lot of great times, and I'm forever grateful for them. Thanks, Robert. He loves it when I call him Robert, by the way. My other big break would have been meeting Mark Martin. I am not sure that I would have ever got on Jack's radar without him. Mark was a big fan of mine and a big proponent, and he certainly helped Robbie and I get our foot in the door at Roush Racing. 
As most of you know, Jack Roush is a no-nonsense engineer, hands-on owner, but most of all a racer. I was very intimidated by Jack and going to work for him. They were having tremendous success at the time with Mark and Jeff Burton winning everything. We knew the expectations were high and there was pressure to perform. It didn't take long to learn a lot about Jack and how he did things. The best thing about racing for Jack is he would literally get you anything you asked for. He never ever asked what it cost or how hard it would be to do. He would just ask why we needed it and how it was going to make us faster. Jack would always deliver and he expected the same from all of us. Jack, you always treated me with a tremendous amount of respect, which I probably didn't always deserve, and it was a great honor to drive for you. My next stop was Joe Gibbs Racing. It's pretty amazing that I was able to go from one Hall of Fame car owner to another. Coach is a great leader, motivator, speaker, salesman, recruiter, and storyteller. In fact, he is such a good storyteller, he could tell you the same John Riggins story over and over and over again, and it always felt like it was the first time you heard it. That's great. Uh, there's a few people I know I'm talking about. Uh, Joe Gibbs Racing, I always felt like a family, seriously, and I was blessed to be part of it for five years. I'll always cherish all the great times we had together there. Thanks, Coach. That brings me to Jason Ratcliffe. Jason is one of the most underrated crew chiefs in the garage. He taught me lots about racing, how to treat people, how to problem solve, but most of all, he taught me that there is way more to be learned by listening than talking. He also taught me that usually the smartest guy in the room isn't the one doing all the talking, and I'm definitely proving his theory correct right now. <laughs> Jason, I had so much fun working and racing with you, and um, just thanks for being the man and the friend that you are. Todd Bolin is one of the smartest men I've ever met. I really appreciate your patience and your honesty. Even when it wasn't what I wanted to hear, you give it to me straight. That's a sign of a true friend. Also, I will never forget the Sunday morning bike ride when I was on NASCAR house arrest. That meant more to me than you'll ever know. <laughs> As I touched on earlier, racing is a family sport. Dad, thanks for getting me involved in racing, and thanks for being there to support me every step of the way. We sure had a lot of great times racing through the years. I have so many great memories with you from start to finish. I appreciate all that you sacrificed to get us to the racetrack, as I'm sure you would have loved to trade for a new Corvette every year instead of buying race tires and pit passes. You never complained, never said no, just came up with solutions and tried to help me the best you could to realize our dreams. Who would have ever thought it would have ended up like this? Thanks, Dad. My sister, Kelly. I know it hasn't always been easy being Matt's sister, but thanks for supporting me. Uh, from going all my races, uh, growing up, running the fan club, running the store all those years, I really appreciate you being there. I can't imagine how old it got answering questions about your brother. People walking up and telling you how great your brother is. People walking up and telling you what a jerk your brother is. Although you probably agreed with that group. <laughs> but seriously, thank you, Kelly. Uh, Katie, I know we always joked about couples professing their love to each other on social media, in speeches, on TV, etc. But man, do I love you. I couldn't ask for a better person to go through this journey of life with. Thanks for loving me, supporting me, and always having my back. Ross, Kaylin, Grace, Clara, Mallory, I've been so blessed to have you kids. I'm proud of you all, and I love you all to the moon and back. Amber, thanks for taking such good care of Ross, and thanks for the awesome grandkids. <laughs> Lexi and Colt, I'm so thankful you can make it out tonight. And last, but certainly not least, I want to thank my mom. She was a great woman of faith who was always there for her family. I miss her dearly, and I wish she was here celebrating with us tonight. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>